There are many factors that might affect the way that we make decisions, our age, our past experiences and even our mood on the day. But now a new study has suggested that the language we speak can also play a part in our willingness to wait for a reward. Researchers gave the choice of having an amount of money now or a slightly greater amount later. But they put this choice to bilingual speakers once in each of the languages they spoke. So did the language in which the decision was put to those people affect their decision? Intriguingly, yes it did. And speaking to Will Tingle from Tel Aviv, Tali Regev, and to kick us off, Tumar Critchley katz When people are addressed in a language that does not force the speakers to distinguish between the present and the future, they're more willing to receive payments that are later in time and uh, they need less money to accept that. And also they are more willing to delay gratification. And Tali, could you give us an example of a language that may be more or less prone to this kind of thing? So the languages we call uh, weak future time reference are German, Dutch, and Mandarin. These are the languages that we use in our study. And the strong languages that have a strong future time reference are English, Spanish, French, and Hindi. So as an English speaker, which I sometimes am, I'm more likely to want a reward right now because tenses in English often have a strong future time reference, a strong differentiation between past and future. So English is an interesting case because in our study and in previous studies, we categorize English as a strong future time reference language. Although English does not always require you to use different words, different verbs when you address the present and the future. In theory, you can say, I, I'm leaving today or I'm leaving next week. And this is acceptable and people sometimes use it. So on low, on low English does not require or does not always require speakers to address the present and the future differently. It is categorized as a language that does force people to choose between the present and the future. So English is somewhere in between. We address it as more future time reference language than not. And this is how previous studies have addressed English before. The implications for English speakers would be that English speakers on average tend to prefer immediate gratification more than speakers of languages that do not distinguish between the present and the future. Also, English speakers are going to be a little more likely to discount future rewards compared to speakers of languages that don't distinguish between the present and the future. So the big question is then, why does our language's use of tenses affect the way we want rewards? Is it just that languages which don't differentiate strongly between present and future don't see them as separate and so don't mind at what point they get a reward? We think that the grammar of language, that the structure of language actually um, activates scripts about time. So when I'm forced to ask myself whether I want to use the present tense or the future tense in a language that requires me to do so, I'm going to be distinguishing between the present and the future constantly. And my distinctions are going to become precise. And as soon as I speak the language, scripts about time, about the present and the future are going to be immediately evoked. And that's going to make me be more aware about this is now, this is the future, and I'm going to think more about the future. So I maybe tend to make a distinction between them, prefer more the present, I wouldn't want to delay gratification, and so on. Language is inherently tied to the society that it belongs to. How do you know that it isn't the societal attitudes towards investment or saving that are actually affecting these attitudes? Or do you think the two are more heavily interconnected with one another than perhaps we think? So we think that the two are interconnected in the sense that cultures and languages are correlated and they affect each other. But in our study, what we try to do is we try to hold culture constant by looking at people who share cultures. So we use bilingual people, people who are fluent in two languages and therefore are immersed in two cultures. But for some people, we activate one language and for others, we activate the others. And also because we have 12 different language pairs in our study, we use different languages and hopefully we use different cultures as well so that our findings are not about the cultures in which languages are immersed, but actually about the languages themselves. If you were to learn another language that was considered more weak or more strong in terms of your perception of time, do you think that would affect how you would begin to see delayed gratification? What we do find in our study is that the more proficient you are in a language, the stronger its effect 
on how you behave. So if you are now to study a new language, you're probably not going to be very proficient in it uh, enough for it to influence the way you think about the world and the future. But for bilingual people, it does matter if you address them in one language versus another, they're going to behave in a different way, which is the remarkable finding, I think, of the study. Two more Critchley cats and Tali Regev there. And the paper describing that work has just come out in the journal PNAS.